Hello students, myself Chetangar, your mentor for today's lecture and I welcome you all to our International Mathematics Olympiad series. Uh, in this series, we shall, we shall be discussing uh, a lot of previous year Olympiad questions of various countries and in today's lecture, we will be discussing uh, Australian Intermediate Mathematics Olympiad questions. This is basically the third stage uh, in Australian uh, International Mass Team Selection process, right? So let's start the session. Uh, this is first question. This is from uh, AIMO 2016. Right? The question says that uh, a three-digit number in base seven is also a three-digit number when written in base six. Right? But each digit ha was increased by one. Right? Now, what is the largest value wi uh, which this number can have when written in base ten? Right? Now, this is the question. Okay. Let's assume uh, the number which is in base 7 the three digit number is abc right let's assume this as abc uh, in base 7 now the same number when written in base 6 uh, is also a three digit number right but each digit is increased by one so uh, base 6 the number which is in base 6 that must be a plus 1 b plus 1 these are the digits right c plus 1 in base this number is in base 6 right now clearly uh, since uh, these are the single digits so c plus 1 must be less than or equal to 5 or you can say c should be less than or equal to 4 right and same with a b same with a and b similarly we can say a and b they must also be less than or equal to 4 right now consider this ABC uh, in base 7. Let's write this number in uh, base 10. And similarly, we will write the this number also in base 10 and we will equate them, right? So that will be 7 square times A plus 7 times B plus C. And that should be equal to 6 square times A plus 1 plus 6 times B plus 1. And I'm very sure of, uh, you must be knowing the conversion plus C plus 1, right? Now this is the conversion, right? So since uh, we have written both the numbers in base 10, uh, so they must be equal, right? Uh, now uh, let's simplify this process and that comes out to be 49 times A plus 7B plus C and that is 36 times A plus 6B plus the constant plus C plus the constant will be 36 plus 6 42 plus 1. I think that should be 43. Uh, yes, that is 43. Right now, just simplify the process and uh, uh, we get 13 a plus b that is equals to 43. Right, this is what we get. All right, now clearly uh, b again a and b must be less than or equal to 4. Uh, if I substitute a to be equals to 4, uh, if a is 4. Then from from this equation b will be negative and that is not possible. So a equals to 4 is rejected. Now if a is let's say 2, then b is clearly greater than 4. Again, if a is 2 or 1, then b is greater than 4. And again, uh, this is not correct. So a is 2 and 1, that is also rejected. 2, 1 or 0, right? So that this thing now implies that a must be your what? A must be 3 and then B will be equals to 4 right so A is 3 and B is 4 now what what is uh, being asked the largest value now since this equation is independent of C so C can take any value C can take 0 1 2 3 or 4 but since we are interested in largest value so for largest such number for largest such number c must be equal to 4 right so what 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 exactly is the number the number will be 3 4 4 but obviously this number is in base 7 right abc was in base 7 and so a is 3 b is 4 and c is again 4 but again this number is in base 7 but we are interested in finding the number in base 10 so let's just calculate this thing right so this is clearly the number in base uh, 10 so that will give me what 49 times 3 plus 
28 7 times 4 plus 4 right so this is nothing but 147 plus 32 and that comes out to be 179 right so that should be our answer right the answer will be 179 so as you can see this uh, is in uh, this is a decent question from number theory right now let's let's proceed to the next question okay this question says that abcd is a parallelogram point p is on ab produce such that db by okay let's let's draw the diagram all right point p is on ab produced such that db bisects bc okay let's say this is the midpoint point p is on ab produced so this is let's say point p right db bisect bc at n so this is point n right and as uh, further it is written point q is on ba produce such that okay point q is on ba produce such that this is the midpoint so this must be our point q and this is point m such that cq bisects ad at m right now uh, it is being written line dp and cq they meet at o this dp and cq they meet at o all right and if the area of the parallelogram abcd is 192 we need to find the area of triangle poq okay this one right perfect no problem let's let's join m and n right now since m and n are the uh, midpoints of ad and bc right so this parallelogram m n uh, m n c d right that the area will be half of the area of the parallelogram abcd okay let me rewrite now we are interested in area of triangle p o q right so i'll break it in area of triangle uh, a m q plus area of triangle b p n plus area of triangle m o n right plus uh, this thing area of parallelogram a b n m right i can uh, rewrite i can break this uh, triangle poq into in these four parts now if you consider amq this amq right i'll write here this area of triangle amq that should be equal to this area of triangle c d m because they both triangles are congruent clearly uh, dm was equal to ma these two lines are parallel right so uh, by the angle angle uh, asa property we can say that we, these two triangles are congruent and cdm uh, area is nothing but half of this parallelogram mdcn mdcn right which is further half of the whole parallelogram so it should be one fourth of uh, area of abcd right which is nothing but 192 upon 4 right so this area of triangle amq that should be 192 upon 4 similarly this area by the same logic this area should also be what this should also be 192 upon 4 now let's consider mon mon is clearly uh, area of triangle mon that is clearly one fourth of area of triangle uh, area of parallelogram mn cd uh, which in turns is half of area of ABCD, so that should be one eighth of area of the parallelogram ABCD, right? So MON that should be nothing but 192 upon 8 plus now this ABNM parallelogram this that is clearly half of ABCD, so that is 192, right? So now you can calculate this. This is nothing but 192 plus 192 upon 8, and that comes out to be 24, right? So that is uh, nothing but 216, right? Perfect. So uh, the area of the triangle POQ, that should be 216, right? 216 square units, right? So that was a question from AIMR 2018. Now let's proceed to the next question. This question says that determine the smallest positive integer y for which a, uh, for which a positive integer x satisfying this equation is equals to y square, all right? 
All right. Uh, now let's let's consider the first two terms of this equation. We can simplify this uh, these two terms to make us it a single term, right? Let's take two power ten common. So what we are left with two cube, which is eight plus one plus two power x that is equals to y squared, right? Now this is nine and this is two power ten. So we can clearly uh, okay. So that is nothing but a perfect square that is of three times two power five squared, right? Plus 2 power x that is equal to y square. Now let's let's take this on the right hand side. So what what we will get 2 power x that is equal to um, uh, y square minus this thing. This is 32 into 3, 96 squared, right? And that is nothing but y minus 96 and y plus 96, right? Now since product of these two numbers that is equal to 2 power x, right? So uh, let's say one of these numbers should contain some powers of x, uh, some powers of 2, let's say it is 2 power n, and the other number that should also contain the remaining power of 2, and let's assume that is 2 raised to power n. And practically m plus n, this m plus n, that should be nothing but that is x, right? And since y minus 96 is smaller than y plus 96, then that we can also say that this m, our m is obviously less than our m. All right, now let's subtract these two things. Second minus first, right? Why we are subtracting? Because uh, now we can eliminate y and what we are left with two times 96, and that is 96 is nothing but uh, your 32 into 3. So 2 power 6 into 3. That is 2 times 96 when we are subtracting. And that is nothing but that is equal to 2 power n minus 2 power m, right? Which can be written, rewritten as, let's take 2 power m common. So that will be 2 raised to power n minus n minus 1. And clearly this 2 power m, that should be equal to this 2 power 6. That means uh, this further implies that m must be equal to what? m should be equal to 6 and this is 3 can be written as 4 minus 1. So m, n minus m should be 2 because 2 square is 4, right? So that means n must be equal to 8, right? So this is m, this is m, right? Now what we are interested in? Uh, determine the smallest positive entities are y. Okay, we are interested in y. All right. So m is 6. Let's just put the value of uh, uh, anything. Let's put just uh, put m equals to 6 here. So y will be equal to, that will be equal to, 2 raised to power 6 plus 96 and that is nothing but 64 plus 96 and that should be equal to 160. So 160 is the perfect answer and this is a this is an easy question. Yeah. Uh, that was an easy question. Okay, now let's proceed to one more question that is from AIMO 2013 and uh, that seems to be a question from combinatorics. Okay, the question says that how many pairs of three digit palindromes uh, such that they when they are added, uh, the result is a four digit palindrome. For example, this 232 plus 989, 232 is a palindrome, 989 is a palindrome, and the result is a four digit number, and uh, that should also be a palindrome, right? All right, so uh, we are adding a three digit palindrome. Let's uh, let's write the first palindrome as A, B, A. To another palindrome, let's assume that is C D C. Of if when we are adding, we are getting a four-digit palindrome, right? So let's assume that palindrome to be E F F E, right? Now, when any uh, three-digit numbers, uh, when any two three-digit numbers are added, and if the resultant is a four-digit number, then that is practically E should be one. E must be one, right? Why? Because let's assume the largest two digit numbers when added. So this comes out to be 1998, right? So we are basically the purpose is this first digit that can, that, that has to be one, right? If, the, if it is a four digit number. So if E is one, all right. So A plus C, that is, that, uh, that has to be, okay. All right. A plus C, that is giving, one as uh, as a unit digit, if uh, that a plus c that is giving one as a unit digit, 
and the borrow must also be one right the uh, the point is a plus c it must be a two digit number and uh, its tens digit must be e uh, that is one and its unit digit must be one also so that means a plus c that must be 11 right a plus c must be 11 and uh, if a plus c is 11 then b plus d plus the borrowed one that is one that should be either f or or it should be or it should be what it should be uh, 10 plus f right or it should be 10 plus f perfect all right great now since a plus c is uh, 11 now here it is f so either the borrow can be 0 or the borrow can be 1 right so uh, this f that either it can be 1 or it can be 2 right when borrow is 0 uh, if borrow is 0 then then this f has to be 1 right if borrow is 0 then that means b plus d must be 0 then that is only possible when b is 0 and d is 0 all right if borrow is 2 uh, then this uh, again one borrow is from this to d, this b plus d should be 10 plus f okay so this b plus d plus 1 that should be what if borrow is 1 uh, then this b plus d plus 1 that should be 10 plus 2 that is 12 so that means b plus d should be 11 in that scenario right all right perfect so if b plus d is 11 so what we can say uh, there are how many possibilities 2 9 right 3 8 these are the possibilities 4 7 and uh, let's say um, 5 6 and their opposite that is 9 2 8 3 7 4 6 5 so how many options we have for uh, b and d we have in total how many these options are these are nine options so b and d they can uh, they can take values in nine ways right now let's consider a plus c and since we are uh, talking about pairs right so we are not uh, uh, i mean 232 if 232 plus 989 and 989 plus 232 these two ways will be considered obviously same because since we are uh, talking about the pairs right uh, and uh, now b, b and d can take values in nine ways so let's take the possible let's consider the possible pairs of a and c since our result in our result a plus c was 11 right we have already uh, said that a plus c is 11 so what are the possible distinct pairs for a and c that is only four possibilities basically these four possibilities right 2 and 9 3 and 8 4 and 7 5 and 6 right so these are the possibilities for uh, a and c for the values of a and c so how many finally distinct numbers can be formed that they, they will be 9 into 4 that is 36 such pairs are possible which will uh, in which both the three digit numbers will be a palindrome and the resultant will be a four digit palindrome right so that's it um, that's it from today's session right we will meet you in the next session and in the next session we will be discussing a previous year olympiad mass questions of a uh, different country right so see you in the next session till then please take a very good care of yourself thank you bye bye